All right, thank you very much for joining this Click Data webinar on uh, data management and transformation with our new module called the Dataflow module. Dataflow is a widely used word to signify a bunch of things. So we're gonna get uh, a detailed look at what exactly you, we mean by it. Um, with us, we have Anna Walter, our product manager at Click Data. And we don't have Shri, that's why I'm here. Hello, I'm the new Shri. Shri, unfortunately, uh, got ill uh, over the last couple of days and uh, I'm taking over this session for him. Um, so you can refer to me as Shri if you'd like, I'll understand uh, he's much better looking than I am. Um, first things first, I, I believe the audio and the video is, is working well. If not, please drop um, a, a little note on the chat. It is a moderated chat so as not to disturb the, the flow, but um, I will take a step back once Anna uh, starts going and then she'll uh, also take a look at it and we will um, uh, make uh, those comments public as they come along or at the right time or at the end of the webinar. It is a recorded webinar. We're recording right now and it will be published on our website um, within 24 hours or so of um, of the of this date. And um, if you have any uh, other reactions, feel free to use our Click Data webinar hashtag uh, on Twitter. With that, and for those that do not know what we do and, and who we are, Click Data, we are a SaaS, a software as a service cloud-based platform that allows any size of company or, or, um, or department to pull data in from a wide variety of data sources, uh, work with the data, uh, massage it, join data from different systems, and then finally uh, do some analysis and visualization on it, or visualization and then analysis, and, and also automate all that in a way that you don't have to keep coming back and, and copying and pasting things and making sure all the interfaces are working. Um, we not only have uh, dashboards, but we have other tools, alerts, and very soon, within a month, um, the reports module, module as well is coming out, um, as well as other features. So lots, lots of cool stuff to play uh, to play with. Um, in summary, in our uh, quick numbers, we have over a thousand customers all over the world. Um, we're present in a wide variety of countries with uh, six offices around the world. Um, what else do we have here? Uh, let's get started. Uh, we kind of summarize a little bit. Um, if you don't know who we are by now please feel free to go to our website, www.creekdata.com. Uh, but on today's agenda, uh, Anna is gonna cover some of these uh, topics. What is data flow, the benefits of it. Um, and then I'll, I'll try to uh, take over Shree's uh, demo uh, of use cases as best as I can on short notice. And we'll have a small Q&A as well as the future uh, uh, before the Q&A, uh, the future of data flow, where we wanna take it, and then the Q&A. And with that, Anna, you got the mouse. Hey, thank you. Can you hear me well? Okay, cool. Great. So um, we're going to look into what Dataflow is really for starters. So um, it's a feature that we have released very recently on the platform and which allows to transform and process data. So it's not data per se, it's really a process that you can use and a tool to, to transform data. So let's have a look at what it's built, how it's built, sorry. Uh, so basically a flow puts data from an input table, like we can see here on the, on the left side um, with the green box. Um, it runs this data to a variety of nodes, meaning each node is a transformation of the data, or it can be a calculated column or anything else. Uh, and that tr transformated data is then outputted in a mm, output table. And that table is then to be used um, on the platform in dashboard, reports, and uh, all other um, applications. So that's a very simple flow. Uh, you will see more exciting flows during the demo with Tamo later. OK, so a few basic principles. Um, a data flow needs at least one input table and one output table. And then in the middle, you can do whatever you want. Um, but you can also have more than one input table. Uh, you can have also more than one output table. So at any place in the, in the flow, um, output tables can be generated and the flow can then continue as well. There's an unlimited number of nodes and branches that can be built. On the grid of the data flow, you can have multiple branches that run in parallel and don't flow into each other 
or you can decide to build it uh, the other way around to have multiple uh, branches that flow into one output table. It really depends on what you need to do. There's an unlimited um, number of nodes that can be created, so it's really up uh, to what is needed in terms of transformations. Some of the nodes will need to input. Um, you will see that on the demo. So, for example, joins, aggregation, lookups, combine, combinations, etc. They will need multiple inputs to 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 work. Um, and I'll show you a few examples later on as well. One of the very important principles to understand with flow um, is that a flow refreshes an output table only when it is executed. So when you build a data flow and you uh, you save it, it will not output the data automatically into um, the output table. You have to execute it. So that has really cool benefits that come with it, and we're looking into them in a few seconds. So the key benefits of the data flow are, first of all, a really cool overview of data transformations. You have a flow. A flow is really a grid where you can see how data is transformed uh, step by step from an input table into an output table. So it's very clear um, how the relationships between these tables are built and, um, and how, um, how really the, the data flows through, um, through the platform. Um, another good thing is that uh, the flows are separated from the data uh, tables in the UI, meaning that you have an explorer for all your data, for the input tables and output tables, and then another explorer for um, data flow. And as with any other uh, explorer in click data, you can organize your flows in folders, personal folders, um, team folders, etc. So another benefit is the really cool control you have over versioning. Uh, you can really decide whenever the output table is going to be uh, refreshed, meaning that, for example, if you have worked on the flow, you are using the output table in a dashboard, in a report, um, and then you want to go back to the data flow and work on it and maybe make it better and change things, you will not have to, um, the, sorry, the, uh, what I mean is that the, the flow will only execute the output table when you decide you're finished with your work. So you can work on your, uh, your flow, you can save it, etc. It will not have any impact on uh, your data oh, in, the end. in the end. And to that point, Anna, if I may ask, uh, when you say until you execute it, you mentioned that it only runs when you execute it, but uh, we can schedule it, right? So yeah, exactly. you can tie it in with your data refreshes at the same time. Yeah, definitely. So you can add your um, data flow executions uh, to your schedules. And as with any other task on schedules, you can decide when you run it and in sequence with other tasks. But you can also run it manually if you, if you prefer. So another key um, item about Dataflow is the top performances you will get by using Dataflow. Uh, so we have, we have used optimized coding techniques to, to, to build Dataflow. It runs really quick. You can run threads in parallel or in sequence. And because it's um, uh, refreshing an output table, the calculations that you're doing on the flow are pre-calculated on that output table, meaning that the output tables that are then used in dashboards, they will actually um, be Sorry, the other way around. So data, the dashboards that will use these pre-calculated um, output tables, they will run really, really quickly because you won't have to wait for the calculations to be done in the back end. Do you have anything to add to that, Thermo? No, I think you said it all, but uh, I think for those of you joining us uh, and that are current customers, you can um, relate to the fact that if you have multiple process in parallel, that you are limited currently to a few processes in parallel, whereas with the data flow, as Anna put it, uh, they do run in parallel. And, and that um, eases a lot of the load as well on all our servers around the world because we're no longer waiting, um, where is this refresh is done? Because when it is, I have to go refresh this view and this cache and so forth. Uh, with data flow, we don't have to do those things. We know where we are on the step, we know what we have to do. And if there's another branch that comes in, we know to wait there for that branch. So there's there's less checking, there's less hits on the database. So there's a lot of, in addition to the way it's been uh, coded, there's a lot of other performance gains to uh, due to the, the this new kind of uh, approach that we're taking. So um, yeah, we've lost Anna. So I'm actually gonna take over because we, we have a lot to cover. Um, 
the next slide was on the focus on a selection of certain nodes. And I was going to cover uh, a little bit um, some of the nodes that exist that have been built. Um, uh, so this is a bit of a, a, an overview of all of them. Ah, and we have Anna back. Hey, sorry, my PC crashed. <laughs> it Good timing. <laughs> Great timing, I see. Yeah, okay, I can take it from here. So I wanted to show a few of the nodes um, that we propose in the data flow, but there are more, and you will see some of the others that will not be presented here with Talmo later. So this uh, node here is um, enabling you to create a merge from different input tables into one table. So basically here it's uh, joining company information with HR information and geographical information into one output table. Um, so I shouldn't say output table. It's really a node that creates an input table that you can then use in your flow. Then we have multiple types of filters. We have the filter wizard that allows you to simply select uh, columns, content, values, etc., to create your filters. And the filter query nodes that enables you to create more advanced filters, logics, and um, you can also switch from wizards to query very quickly. The combine node will allow you to combine data sets that are similar into one. So in this case, we have two data sets that are similar, but each with one row, and we combine that in that in one table with two rows. Then we have the pivot and on pivot uh, functionalities, which allows to to transpose columns to rows and the other way around, with some really cool features and enables you to also clean the data that is that is very repetitive when you on pivot stuff and uh, and other and other nice. Um, little uh, features. Okay, and then we have some, a lot of nodes for joins, aggregation, lookup. So this is one example where we can see we have aggregated um, orders data from this table here on the, on the left uh, bottom to the sales um, table on the, on the top. And that gives us a new output where the orders are summed by the months and in relation to sales. Okay, and this one is also a, a nice feature. You can actually uh, very quickly uh, transform JSON content into rows or columns. Here in this example, for ex we can see that we have this table with employees listed in one field. And with this, with this uh, node, we can simply um, create one row out of each employee and create a new data set or new a transform data set that is easier to use with to sorry to that, just, just on that slide and to avoid any confusion obviously as you can see that is not a json column it is a comma separated yeah. which is actually another node that we have which is a splitter a text splitter um but uh in this case the slide is actually just mistaken um again just assume that employees would be a json structure um with an array inside and city and or sorry, contact on the bottom example would actually be a, a adjacent object instead of a list as it is. Okay, so now I think we're going to the juicy stuff. So where do you find Dataflow? Um, again, Dataflow is going to be available for all tiers uh, and click data. Um, this is going to be the overall replacement of some of the other features that we have. Uh, merges and fusions uh, specifically. Um, and data flows can be found on this in this menu, on the data menu, obviously. And um, again, as Anna mentioned, we have folders in the subfolder structure and security associated with data flows. And again, we use a security principle that if you can have access to the data flow, you will then have access to all the nodes inside that data flow, not necessarily to the data included in that data flow. Um, you will be able to select data, but not necessarily access the data that the data flow refers to, um, except for the output tables. That's very important because the data flow ar allows execution of the data flow. And therefore, if you have access as an editor to the data flow, you should also have access, access to the output tables. Um, so here are three examples, and um, I'm going to actually uh, 
uh, revert back very quickly to the presentation because you'll help me guide this. I just wanted to show you very quickly where you can find it. But um, we're going to go through uh, three examples here. The first one is um, uh, using multiple clients or uh, aggregating multiple clients um, using a data flow. Uh, now, this is very useful for marketing agencies. Um, and, uh, and other multi-client uh, clients of ours where you need to combine multiple clients each time. So you can set up a data flow for two or three. And then each time you have a new customer, you can just add a new input data set to that data flow and recombine. OK, um, so um, I'm going to jump to that case specifically right now. Um, so there's going to be a bit of a, a, a jumping around as, as I switch each time. But I think it's important. It helps me guide uh, this. So it's the marketing multi scenario here. I'm just going to load up that that um, that specific uh, item. I'm going to remove the little mini map here that I have at the bottom, just so we have a, a clear uh, perspective. So once again, you'll see uh, most of the nodes that Anna uh, discussed right um, on this plus. This is where you will see new nodes coming soon as well, uh, which we'll talk about uh, shortly as well. You can pin this, but in essence, you can see here that we have a data flow that combines Google Analytics uh, data uh, or Google Ads, I believe, I, I apologize, with uh, Facebook uh, ads uh, data. Um, and again, it combines them. I think it's ads. It's either ads or analytics, one or the other. Um, but in essence, what you're doing is you're combining and adding certain, custom, uh, certain calculated columns here. Um, uh, for example, uh, here there's a small calculation uh, to basically just add the client name to this flow. In essence, we've just added a column name called client name, and we just put in the name of that of that uh, company in this case. Very simple one, demo company. So at this point in time, we have two inbound flows that come from different data sources with different columns. Um, and we do a union at this point in time um, uh, to combine both of those branches, those flows, into one. And here, um, the designer of this data flow has, has decided that at this point in time, I have a good enough table here that can serve a certain purpose uh, for certain reports or certain dashboards. So um, they've decided to output a table at this point in time, but also continue with the data flow and say, yeah, okay, I've solved that, uh, that question, but I have... I need to complete with additional uh, additional items down the downstream. So let me continue. And here they've added uh, a source, and the source is Google. Um, and and then you know the flow gets into another combined situation to produce all clients, all sources. So at this point in time, we have all clients in Google Analytics, and then we repeat that entire process here pretty much for the Facebook. Again, very simple data flow, but just basically to um, to to get you uh, slowly started on this. There is a group by as well, um, and there's an advantage of this group by um, over the current existing one in terms of views that we can do today is that we can actually group multiple values at once. In this case, uh, we have only grouped the number of users. We've summed up the number of users, but you can add multiple aggregations on the same group by in one shot. In the same way that you could also do multiple calculations in one node, avoiding you having to have many little boxes separated. So um, you'll see that we may not have used that for comprehension um, in some cases, but, um, but you can uh, put multiple operations sometimes in, in some nodes. Um, also notice that we've put in a column selector here. Um, the reason potentially why the designer of this data flow did that is because um, this source of data here has a lot of columns, as most things in Facebook and Google Analytics have. Um, but in essence, they don't need that many. So in here, they can choose to hide uh, or uh, make visible certain columns. Additionally, they may want to rename as well uh, the columns uh, starting from a, a specific set of point on the data flow to make it easier for you downstream to understand what that column is about. So you can do actually a lot of renaming and hiding uh, of columns to simplify your data flows downstream. So when you come here and you add a column 
and you're trying to select, you now have a smaller set of columns to work with, making it a lot easier to work with, okay? So this is the first multi uh, uh, scenario. We're gonna move to the next one. Um, I'm actually gonna, again, switch back to the presentation. Sorry for the, uh, the, the flashbacks here. Uh, this is a multi-node outputs with performance benchmark. This, is, I believe, was done for a, a call center. Um, and this is kind of a similar case scenario, but in this case, it's about combining multiple, uh, multiple sources of data, not uh, similar uh, types of data source. So let's switch uh, back to, to that data flow and see how that looks. And uh, here I go again, share, and hopefully that's coming through. And I'm going to load this one up. All right. Um, a few techniques here that could be helpful for you. Uh, you'll be able to see all your shortcuts here on this little info. Um, but in uh, to pan around, you just hold your control key and move your mouse around. Uh, similarly, you can use your mouse wheel to to zoom in and zoom out, which make it uh, may make it uh, nicer for you to 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 work with. Again, I will hide the mini map, which is also very useful sometimes to navigate. So um, in this case, um, the we start off in this in this uh, uh, data flow demo. Uh, with a call center that basically uh, they knew for sure that there was some tables they wanted to merge. So um, again, uh, we have the feature data merge today, as, you, as some of you may know. Uh, the data merge feature is in essence now going to be replaced with this one. This is a full and will be more powerful uh, if it's not already um, designer where you can already um, basically pick and do the joins um, very much the same way that you did uh, with the other data merge. Um, you can put join conditions uh, across each one of these nodes. So we, here we have the call table or the fact table with the dimensions of employees, companies, and customers, very much one-to-one. -one. And basically you do the joins. Um, it is also intuitive that when you, um, Basically, uh, if you delete, for example, this join here, and again, you grab this handle and you drag it over there, it actually auto matches based on name and type uh, for you. So uh, a lot of these things are done for you much better than the previous version. Uh, in addition to other things that we are now able to do and will continue to evolve in this, in this, um, in this designer. Um, so this designer, once again, uh, is the full replacement for the data merge that can be incorporated um, as a um, as a, an input uh, table uh, or joint table or merge tables, okay? So in this case, they've done their fact table, call tables to employees, to customers, to companies. And here, um, uh, Shri has decided to actually split out four calculations in four nodes. Typically, you don't need to do that, as I mentioned before, because you can add all the four calculations right here by specifying a name uh, and entering your formula right away. Um, but he did this to uh, uh, simplify uh, the, the explanation. In this case, um, they did a formula to obtain the full name because that was a separate two columns. The same thing for employee. Uh, they did some ear fixing or addition. They calculated some durations. So again, all these are just simple calculations. And at this point in time, they did um, the final merge table in one. Um, at some point in time, uh, somebody else came in and says, yeah, but can we do this by employee? Um, and sure enough, you can just drag a new node and say, well, I'll grab it from here at this point in time. Um, I will do a, uh, a group by, in this case, uh, by employee and year. Uh, and then I will, again, put that employee year count average duration right into, into this, into this uh, table. And then again, somebody else probably came in and say, oh, you know, what would be really great is if we could put this against our targeted benchmark numbers, which are on another table here. Um, and so... Again, um, you come in a bit later, you, you drop another input table, which is your target benchmark. Um, and then you combine both of these nodes. Uh, you identify the join condition, obviously meeting the departments and the year is important. And again, you will end up with a full uh, table. 
Now, one thing that I did not show on the first one is at any point in time you are on a node, you can validate, that's this check, verifying that the data flow is running properly. And it gives you a bunch of, uh, you know, um, a lot of goobly gook that data analysts understand, which is, um, you know, validating each one of your nodes. So you get the names of the nodes right here, and then he processes them in a fake mode. Um, and then he pretends that he does the work, but he never actually does the work. Um, much like me, I just pretend to do work. But nonetheless, it says everything is great, uh, so it, it's good to go. Now, at the same time, you can click this, um, this all-seeing eye, which is a preview node, and you can see the data flow. It's going to execute the data flow up to that node and give you a preview of the node at that point in time. If, you know, if all things go well in the demo, gods uh, uh, allow me to, to do that and nothing else goes wrong. Um, now, the other thing is, we are improving the speed here because as you can imagine, if you have a very lengthy data flow and you're debugging this quite a lot and saying, oh no, no, this is not right. There's something on my calculation. I have to go back again. And this is like 50 nodes down and you have to run the node every time. So we are currently working as well on a, a concept of uh, building up to the last uh, working node so that that process is much faster. So that will come out as well in, in, in the months to come. So this debugging process is faster, right? And as Anna mentioned, you can run this manually just by running this and executing, um, you know, save and execute. I guess I moved some things around. And so it's actually going to execute the whole data flow. Um, and, and, you know, the data is now done. Um, so all these tables have been updated um, and it's as simple as that. There's not a lot else to see there. Um, again, just wanted to give you a bit of an overview of using these, um, the toolbar and the designer itself and how you can uh, actually work with it. Tell me and now you leave that absolutely. note. Sorry, Too that flow. <laughs> Let me go back. <laughs> Let me go back. No yeah. worries. You, we have one node per calculated column here, but that could have been done differently, right? Yeah, that's what I mentioned. That um, this was done for uh, for visualization point of view rather than. But yeah, for example, employee full name. If I look at the formula and I say, well, I didn't need it to do it here. I could have just come here and saying employee full name. I'm not going to name it the same, otherwise there will be a conflict. And I'll just put the table here. And I could have all four calculations here um, in, in, in my main node, and that's it, and continue. Exactly. Yeah. All righty. So the last uh, use case um, is the uh, iterative step build out at every node. Um, well, this is a little bit like uh, what we uh, actually already alluded to in this last case, uh, which is the fact that sometimes we start um, um, a data flow and we really don't know where we're going to go with it until maybe we have some feedback from the users and so forth. Um, so, you know, um, in, in that respect, Let's just go back to it and let's do it. Uh, and let me go back, close this one up. And it's the fitness scenario. All right, so the fitness scenario, let's just take a look at it. Interesting enough, like the first thing I notice on this as I look at it is that it does not have any output tables. Now, um, she told me that's okay. He was just building this out to explain the concept of iterative uh, build out, um, which is, which is um, um, the concept here is to say, well, you know, I start with two tables uh, that potentially come from different data sources. I add the calculation column potentially to make them match. I do a join. Now notice um, the different types of joins that we have here. I called one the merge and I, and the other one is a join. So the table merge, which is a replacement for the full data merge that we have today, is um, a very uh, relationship driven um, uh, way of connecting all these tables, parent, child, uh, fact table to dimension tables. Um, and it's used as an input only. It cannot be used downstream, okay? Whereas the join and combine uh, nodes 
can be used at any point in time uh, with certain limitations. Um, for example, a join can only at this point in time join two flows at a time, okay? So uh, this is an ideal segue to show you here what happened. Um, we started with these two tables. We did a join. We did a column selector to pick some tables. We hid one common uh, duplicated column that we were not interested in. And then at some point in time, we said, well, what if we now add also teaching instructors here? And then they've combined again into another join. And then they did another column selector. And then they did a calculation column. And then they pivoted this into two different um, uh, views, et cetera. But the idea here is that, um, you know, many times with views and merges and, and fusions, we had to go back and rethink the whole thing because um, in essence, you know, it was getting very complicated and there were things that we needed to do pre-hand. Uh, so, you know, it created a lot of different dependencies between all those views, merges, and fusions, and it got really complicated. With this data flow, you kind of simplify all that. Um, you may start wrong, but as you can see here, you have your input and you have normally your output. And basically the path that you take can be uh, iteratively built, or you can just say, you know what? I, I, need a, I need a node now between these two guys here. And so you kind of just, um, you know, a drag and drop and, you know, it cuts the, the flow right in between and say, yeah, I'm going to add something here. And, and boom, you start building it out like that. Very dynamic in that sense, right? So um, a lot of cool things here you can do with the data flow, um, but more importantly, it's the speed and rapidity that, that um, is going to enable you to build uh, easier data flows and and communicate what's happening with the data from beginning to end using this 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 type of um, designer. And with that, uh, we resume uh, the normal presentation. I will wait just to see if there's any questions on those uh, simple but uh, hopefully illustrative uh, use cases. And until while we wait. Uh, will the new, um, I have a, a new question. Will the new data flow run faster than the old? We never had an old data flow. Um, so I'm not sure if we mean the data views and data merges and data fusions. If that's what you're meaning, yes, uh, it, it does run substantially faster. Um, and remember that data views and merges and fusions were never really, um, were never really uh, executed in that sense. There were virtual views. So whenever a dashboard keep, kept accessing a view that was not cached, um, it was recalculating all those calculations that you put on the view, those case statements or group buys, those unpivots. It was doing that every single time a dashboard view or a publication uh, went out. And that is what really taxed and, and slowed down a lot of uh, a lot of times, especially if your views were quite complex. Whereas the data flow executes it one way, and um, and then and and that's it. And it it, it uh, uh, basically persists the data into a table, calculates once, and reads many times. Whereas the other was calculates many times, reads many times, basically. Um, yeah, and 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 yeah. So so it in it, not only that, but other techniques that we use in terms of how we build a data flow. There's a lot of other improvements that um, our lead engineer Billy uh, actually uh, did on this, which is quite incredible. And and um, uh, really, um, uh, we have really seen an improvement not only on the execution of these data flows, but also on the lowering of uh, database consumption for all our customers, which is important as well, uh, especially for those of you that are not undedicated, which are affected by other customers in the same region, in the same uh, location. Um, and there is a question as whether will there be a wizard? Yeah. Anna, you want to answer that? No, I <laughs> wanted to, uh, to tell you there is this question. <laughs> no, unfortunately, there is not a wizard at this point in time. Um, our customers have built amazingly uh, incredible. I'm gonna say I'm not gonna say complex, but I'm gonna say um, uh, amazingly interesting and and 
sophisticated views, merges, and fusions. The number of permutations around that makes it nearly impossible for us to uh, create an easy path forward to migrating these, um, which is not to say we're not going to try. Uh, we have been looking at it uh, more and more recently. Um, but we're uh, if we are able to convert some of them, uh, we may have a small wizard for simpler processes. Uh, for others, unfortunately, there has to be a conversion because there's also a mindset change in how we look at it, right? It's not just a question of conversion, right? Uh, there's a mindset that whereas before you may have needed to do some things that you may no longer need to do, right? So, um, uh, so, so yeah, unfortunately there is not a, a, a wizard or a, uh, an automated way to, to convert it. Are we, did we cover questions for now? Um, so let's talk about some planned features for 2023. Um, so we have some notes coming out in, in our next release in February, uh, the 10th of February, I believe. Uh, there's two notes coming out, Transform and Fusion. And that completes our one-to-one -one, uh, matching. Um, I would say it's not even one-to-one -one because I believe we superseded. We, we have some new nodes that we don't have in the old methods, uh, like the JSON two rows and JSON two columns. Um, we also have uh, a much better handling of group buys and so forth. Lookups and aggregations have also improved. But Transform and Fusion will complete really us being at par with the old, uh, with the old version or the old way of doing things. Um, Transform is very much like a calculated column, but it replaces the value uh, within the same column that exists on the input uh, node. Uh, avoiding you having to uh, rename your columns and so forth. And Fusion allows you to do, as an input, uh, Fusion tables of similar schema, similar, not exactly equal. So it does replace completely our data fusion module and more because you will also have some improvements, uh, both in terms of performance and the way it's designed. Um, our next um, uh, set of nodes that we're working on is geocoding and exchange rates. Um, now, these are small ones. Geocoding is something that we currently do on the dashboard. Um, we are able to geocode uh, locations, addresses into uh, latitudes and longitudes. Um, but we have to do that every time the dashboard is displayed and rendered, um, and incurring costs uh, for us and for you. Uh, our customers, um, and we would like to kind of uh, change that method to say, well, just only go do that once and we can cache the data for a longer period of time. Um, so that's the geocoding node and exchange rates is a node that whenever it gets executed um, uh, based on the rows of data that you have and you can put rules as to, oh, if it hasn't been done before, go get the exchange rate from this currency to that currency. These are uh, some of the requests and uh, potentially a beginnings of data treatment and data augmentation nodes, a series of nodes that we will think of adding. We're also going to work on um, sentiment and segmentation analysis, two different uh, portions. Sentiment analysis, uh, this node will take a text column um, in multiple languages, I believe up to 12 languages to, to date. And if you enable this feature on your account, we will run through cognitive services of Microsoft um, and uh, report back a set of columns that will tell you the sentiment uh, on different um, uh, properties of that text. So for example, if uh, as an example, that text column is a comment on um, uh, you know, a restaurant to say uh, service was great, um, food was okay, um, it was very noisy. Um, it will bring out three properties, uh, one saying service um, positive, um, a food um, neutral or, or positive, depending on your level of definition of okay, and then um, location negative. Uh, so uh, that type of sentiment analysis will be done on this node. Segmentation analysis is very similar. You will need to provide two or three uh, properties columns of your input node uh, to, to, um, to provide a segmentation matrix um, so that we can group 
uh, that specific row and put it into a matrix of sorts that you can then use for segmentation analysis. Great for targeting and segmentation in marketing uh, or sales, uh, as well as other, other items. And we're going to work on a Python execution module. And that is an, an interesting one because the, the ones above are very basic um, um, machine learning type of algorithms. Um, even though we're using the power of cognitive services of uh, Microsoft Azure, but you know your your use case may be more complex than just those two, and you may have your own code of Python that you want to run on the input data. Uh, so in that, there will be a node that will take that input, send it to a a, a machine that you will need to 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 acquire. Uh, through our subscription to run whatever code you put on that, that node. And you will execute that code and then provide the, the output that you suggest you, you output from your Python code back onto another table. With this, you could potentially sample data, create a model, and then execute that model through another branch of the data flow or another data flow. These are the things for 2023, subject to change, of course, based on your feedback, based on your priorities. We're always looking to hear. Um, um, it's, uh, it, it, you know, we're always kind of trying to adopt. Right now, we're just reaching par with the current system, but we're then going to move on to the next uh, level, which is to continue to grow this data flow environment with more nodes and more features and, and more, um, more, more types of functionality. And with that, any more questions? Will we be maintaining versions so that we can roll back in case we mess up? <laughs> uh, we have an undo, redo, uh, but no, we do not have versions of this. Um, but I'll discuss that with the team. I think that could be quite interesting um, to, uh, to discuss. I'm not, yeah. I actually did not think about versioning on data flows, but why not? I can I take on the next question if you want. You want to take a U track as well? Is there a knowledge um, base where a beginner can learn? Yeah, please do. Yeah, so we do have a whole section of the documentation center that is related to data flow. Um, it's in the first section in um, data. And on the data flow, you will find a page for each node that it will explain how to create each node and how to, well, which features there are, et cetera. And um, then the webinar from today is going to be available on our YouTube, YouTube channel. So you can see, again, um, the presentation that Thelma did with the use cases and also the different um, presentation of the selected nodes within the presentation. And for any questions, you can always reach out to a support team and um, they will help you as well. And we will maybe as well create more um, um, material for the data flow um, adoption. And uh, so if you have questions, please reach out, let, me, let us know where you're struggling, where you have questions, where you want more help, and we'll, uh, we'll address that. I think there was a question at the beginning as well, which I think might be interesting to pick up. I'm just trying to find it again. Um, yeah, there was a question about um, accessing or downloading the demo data flows to use as templates using flows as templates? As I was typing, because I was saying, I just added the versioning idea to the backlog because I do think it's, 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 a, it's a great idea and uh, we need it. And uh, I'll do the same thing for the, uh, for the templates, the data flow templates as well, so. There is another mm -hmm. question about the old way of building. If this uh, it's ah. is going to stop sometimes in the future. Um, yeah, can we build old dashboards using the new nodes? Rebuilding old new dashboards using the new nodes. Um, so, so yeah, I, I mean, eventually, eventually, would like to to stop uh, uh, um, the support of um, at least merges and fusions. And by eventually, I mean within two to three years. Um, uh, obviously, we're going to give you as much time as we can to migrate. If we can find wizards or automated ways of auto migration, we will make them available uh, through the uh, through the application itself. For example, the next time you open uh, a, a merge, 
uh, we may detect that this merch is is uh, suitable for auto conversion and say would you like to convert this to a um, a data flow and we look at the merge and the dependencies on the merge and we say yeah let's just build a data flow out of this um, for those that nothing shows up uh, it requires a manual uh, conversion uh, and therefore we need we're counting on you to to migrate to it once you feel comfortable with it um, and yes you can you can use the same dashboards pointing to new tables so that that's important to to say that you don't have to remake you, all your dashboards. Um, and, you know, click data has always been built in such a way that you can, at, at any point in time, rebind your data for dashboards, reports, and so forth to different data sources. So uh, definitely, you can at some uh, at some point to say once you've proven that the data flow is running uh, properly day after day, and that you have the same data but on a different table, you can just go to the dashboard and hit rebind and pointing to the new tables and everything will continue to work exactly as it was before. There is a question around uh, Q&A &A webinars, if we have considered doing that kind of um, get together. So good that you ask. We do have um, plans for that. So it's really cool to see that you have interest in this kind of um, webinars. So yes, it's on the plan for this year. All right, and with that, we've reached our time limit almost. A couple yep. more minutes left. Um, if there's no other questions, I want to thank everybody for taking their time and attending uh, our webinar. Uh, we appreciate your time. Um, uh, you know, if you're not a, a, a current customer or on trial, please do get a free trial of Click Data. I have a take a look around and see what it has to offer and if it fits um, what you're trying to do. Um, thank you very much, everyone. Have a great day or evening. Thank you.